All right, first up, we have a sequence where a sub 0 is given to be 3. And in general, a sub n plus 1 is equal to a n plus 5. We're supposed to list the terms a0 through a5 and then show that there's a general pattern that is followed. For every natural number n, a sub n is equal to 3 plus 5n. Okay, so let's start with this first part, which is purely computational. We're just supposed to list out the value of a0, a1, a2, a3, a4, a5. Now, a0 was originally given to us to be 3, so easy. In general, however, a n plus 1 is a n plus 5. So a1 is equal to a0 plus 5. A2 is equal to A1 plus 5, A3 is equal to A2 plus 5, A4 is equal to A3 plus 5, and A5 is equal to A4 plus 5. A1 is A0 plus A5, and we know that A0 is 3, so this is 3 plus 5, which is 8. Now that we know A1 is 8, A2 is 8 plus 5, or 13. Now that we know A2 is 13, A3 is 13 plus 5, or 18 etc, etc. So we can pretty quickly compute as many particular values as we want. The values of a0 through a5 are 3, 8, 13, 18, 23, 28. This is pretty quick. We start at 3. The next one is always equal to the previous one plus 5. So we just add 5. 3, 8, 13, 18, 23, 28. All right, so this listing part, that's done. Now let's show that a n is always equal to 3 plus 5 n. Now we can test this for the ones that we have computed. Here n is 0. 3 plus 5 times 0 is indeed 3. 3 plus 5 times 1 is indeed 8. 3 plus 5 times 2 is 13, and so forth. But just showing that it holds a couple of times does not mean it will always be true. So we're going to do a proof by induction proof by induction. So in order to show a statement is true for all natural numbers, weak induction, which is how we're going to be starting, first we start with a base case. Is the claim true when n is 0? Then we do our inductive step. If we assume the statement is true for some value of n, can we derive that it is true for n plus 1. Now, this is a common bit of confusion. We are trying to show that a n equals 3 plus 5 n. And here we're actually going to assume that. But I'll bring this up when we get there. It's, it's slightly different. The first thing, however, is we want to show the base case. Is the claim true when n equals 0? Now, our claim is that a n is 3 plus 5 n. So is a 0 actually equal to 3 plus 5 times 0. If we can show that a0 is 3 plus 5 times 0, then for n equal to 0, yes, a0 equals 3 plus 5, 0. We know a sub 0 is 3, and 3 really is equal to 3 plus 5 times 0. There's not a whole lot to do there. For our inductive step, we now assume that a sub n is equal to 3 plus 5 n for some n. And since we're dealing with natural numbers, this is for some n bigger than or equal to 0. So here's the subtle point that gets kind of lost a lot of times. It looks like we're trying to show something, and we've just assumed it, so why aren't we done? So what we are trying to show is that for every n this formula holds, we have just assumed that for some n this formula holds. So just assuming it holds once is not the same thing as showing that it holds always. So if we assume that for some n this formula holds, we are now going to derive that it must hold for the next. So what we want to show is that a n plus 1 really is equal to 3 plus 5 times n plus 1. All we've done is taken the desired formula and replaced every occurrence that we see an n and replaced it with an n plus 1. So the subscript became n plus 1, but the thing that 5 is multiplying also became n plus 1. Now, is there anything we do know about a n plus 1? 
yes, we are given that an plus 1 is an plus 5. So we use this knowledge here. We know this to be true. And look, we just assumed that an is actually equal to 3 plus 5n. So this is 3 plus 5n plus 5. So an plus 1 is equal to an plus 5. That was one of our givens. An equals 3 plus 5n for this specific value of n is our inductive hypothesis that we've assumed. And now there's just a little bit of algebra. This is just 3 plus 5n plus 1. And if we factor 5n plus 5, sorry. And if we factor the 5 out of that, we get that. So just to refresh everything we did, Okay. At the beginning, we just did some manual computation to you know, get our feet wet with how these sequence looks. Next, our claim is that for every n, a n is 3 plus 5 n. Well, is it at least true for n equals 0? Is a 0 actually equal to 3 plus 5 times 0? Yes, we were told at the very beginning that a sub 0 equals 3. Next, if we assume that this desired formula holds for some particular value of n, can we show that the same formula holds for the next value of n? In other words, n plus 1. Well, a n plus 1 was given to us to be a n plus 5. a n plus 1 equals a n plus 5. That was one of our givens. We inductively assumed that a n is equal to 3 plus 5 n, and then a little bit of algebra fills in the rest. All right, moving on to a similar problem. We're given a sub 0 is 1, and for every natural number, a sub n plus 1 is 2an plus 3. The first thing we're asked to do is list out terms again, so let's just go ahead and do that. So we've got a0, a1, a2, a3, a4, a5. So we need to come up with values for all of these. Now, we were just given that a sub 0 is 1, but in general, the next term is equal to twice the previous term plus 3. So a sub 1 is 2 a sub 0 plus 3. a sub 2 is 2 a sub 1 plus 3. a sub 3 is 2 a 2 plus 3. a sub 4 is 2 a 3 plus 3. a sub 5 is 2 a 4 plus 3. But we want to get explicit values here, so up at the top, we know that a sub 0 is 1. So this is 2 times 1 plus 3, otherwise known as 5. Now that we know a1 is 5, this is 2 times 5 plus 3, which is 13. This becomes 2 times 13 plus 3, otherwise known as 29. This is 2 times 29 plus 3, which is 61. And this is 2 times 61 plus 3, which is 125. Okay. So we've computed a bunch of values. We could, of course, keep going. But now let's show that for every natural number, a sub n plus 3 is 2 to the n plus 2. Now, normally in a textbook, this would be written as a sub n equals 2 to the n plus 2 minus 3. The reason it's written like this, uh, where it occurs in my lecture notes, the operation of subtraction actually hasn't been defined yet. So it's the same formula, just written in a way where there's no subtraction. All right, so we need to establish a base case. Is the formula true when n is 0? So we look at the desired formula, a subscript n plus 3 equals 2 to the same little letter n plus an additional 2, but now we're doing it with n 0. So is a 0 plus 3 actually equal to 2 to the 0 plus 2? That's what we would like to be true. Well, a sub 0 was given to us to be 1. And 1 plus 3 is 4, and 4 really is 2 to the 0 plus 2. So in the special circumstance where this little n is 0, then this formula is true. Okay, that's great. Now let's move on to our inductive step. Next what we do is we assume that the desired formula really is true, but we're not going to assume it's true always. We're going to assume it's true for some particular n, at least as large as the base case. So if there's ever a particular n for which this formula holds, what we now need to derive is that the formula holds for the next n, in other words, for n plus 1. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to take the desired claim and we're going to replace every instance of n with n plus 1. So on the left we get a n plus 1 plus 3 and on the right we get 2 and we don't know this to be true yet sorry this is what we're trying to show on the right we would get 2 to the n plus 1 plus 2. This is what we now need to show. Okay. Hopefully the desired formula, if I assume it holds true for some n, we can show that it holds true for the next n. Well, what do we know about a sub n plus 1? a sub n plus 1 is certainly 2 times a n plus 3. So we have 2 times a n plus 3, and we still have this plus 3 hanging off the side. So a n plus 1 is 2 a n plus 3, and we still have a plus 3 there. All right, well, this, I can now say, we assumed that a n plus 3 is 2 to the n plus 2. I don't quite have an a n plus 3 here because this a n is being multiplied by 2. But observe, with a little bit of algebra, this is 2 a n plus 6, and I can factor a 2 out. And now we have assumed that a n plus 3 is simply equal to 2 to the n plus 2. And two, to, two times two to the n plus two is two to the first times two to the n plus two, so I get n plus two plus one. And indeed, two to the n plus two plus one is the same as two to the n plus one plus two. So under the assumption that our claim holds for some particular choice of n, we show that it must remain true for the next choice of n. We manually show that it is true for zero, so here, since it's true for 0, it must be true for 1. Since it's true for 1, it must be true for 2. Since it's true for 2, it must be true for 3, and so on and so on and so forth. And that's how proof by induction goes. So next up, very similar. We are supposed to list out a 0, a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5. The thing that makes this different is that in the formula that defines what the next value of the sequence is, it doesn't just involve the previous term, but it also involves the index itself. So let's see how this plays out. Okay, we're just given that a sub 0 equals 1. The formula would tell us that a1 is 2 times a0, but if there's a 0 here, I then have a plus 0 plus 1. So 2a0 plus 0 plus 1. a sub 2 is 2a1, but observe if there's a 1 down here, then this would become a 1 as well. So 2a1 plus 1 plus 1. a3 is 2a2. Well, if that subscript is a 2, I add a 2 and a 1. a sub 4 is 2a3. Well, if that subscript is 3, I add a 3 and a 1. And a sub 5 is 2a4 plus 4 plus 1. Okay, now I can start computing these as we go. Since we know that a sub 0 is 1, this is 2 times 1 plus 0 plus 1, aka 3. This now becomes 2 times 3 plus 1 plus 1, aka 8. Then we've got uh, 2 times 8 plus 2 plus 1, 16 and 19. Then we have 2 times 19 plus 3 plus 1, so that's 38 plus 4, that's 42. And 2 times 42 plus 4 plus 1, that's 89. Okay. Now let's look at our general claim that n plus 2 plus a n is always 3 times 2 to the n. So our base case is what about when n is 0? Well, what we're checking is 0 plus 2 plus a sub 0, hopefully equal to 3 times 2 to the 0. That's just this formula, but where every occurrence of n has been replaced with a 0. Now, a sub 0 was given to be 1, so here I have 0 plus 2 plus 1. That's just 3. And indeed, since 2 to the 0 is 1, 3 really is equal to 3 times 2 to the 0. So it is true, this formula here is true when n is 0. Next, I'm going to assume 
for some n, at least as large as the base case, that the formula really is true. What I want to prove is that it remains true for the next value of n. So I look at my desired claim. On the left and on the right, I'm going to replace every instance of n with n plus 1, but I don't yet know they're equal. So on the left, I'll have n plus 1 plus 2 plus a sub n plus 1. And what I'd like this to be equal to is 3 times 2 to the n plus 1. So I just went through this formula here. I replaced this with an n plus 1. The 2 is just a 2. Here, the subscript became n plus 1. I don't know they're equal yet, but I want them to be. And on the right, this became an exponent of n plus 1. The, co the goal is just to somehow join these two things together. Well, a sub n plus 1 is known to be 2a n plus n plus 1. So on the left, we've got our n plus 1 plus 2 plus 2a n plus n plus 1. There's a little bit of simplification we can do here. Specifically, this n and this n gives me a 2n. This 1, 2, and 1 gives me a 4. And then I can factor a 2 out of everything. Okay, So you can check if you distribute this out, 2an, 2an, 2n, n, n. 2 times 2 is 4. 1 plus 2 plus 1 is 4. But what did we just assume that n plus 2 plus a n, n plus 2 plus a n is in fact equal to 3 times 2 to the n? Now I've got a 2, a 3, and a 2 to the n. So if I just write this as 3 times 2 times 2 to the n, 2 times 2 to the n is just 2 to the n plus 1. So under the hypothesis that our desired formula is true for some number, it must remain true for the next. And since it is indeed true for zero, the inductive process now says it is true for every natural number. Keeping the induction train going. Okay, as always, we're starting these by listing out a bunch of terms. And we were given that a sub 0 is 1. And the next term is 2 times the previous plus 5. So a sub 1 is 2a0 plus 5. a sub 2 is 2a1 plus 5. a sub 3 is 2a2 plus 5. a sub 4 is 2a3 plus 5. a sub 5 is 2a4 plus 5. Since we know that a sub 0 is 1, this just turns out to be 7. Now that we know a1 is 7, this works out to be 19. If we know that a sub 2 is 19, we get 43. Now that we know a3 is 43, we get 91. And now that we know a4 is 91, 187. Okay, so there is our values of a0, a1, a2, a3, a4, a5. Just a bunch of computation. Now we want to show that for every natural number, this formula here remains true. Well, if it's supposed to always be true, it had better be true for our base case of n equals 0. In other words, on the left, we want 5 plus a sub 0 to actually be equal to 3 times 2 to the 0 plus 1. Well, we know that a 0 is 1. 5 plus 1 is 6. And yes, 6 is 3 times 2, which is 2 to the first, 2 to the 0 plus 1. Everything checks out. So this formula is indeed true if n is 0. Next, we assume we make our inductive hypothesis that for some n, at least as big as our base case, the formula we want to always be true, 5 plus a n equals 3 times 2 to the n plus 1, is in fact true for that particular choice of n. Now what we'd like to have happen is that this formula remains true for the next value of n. So I replace all values of n with n plus 1, but I don't actually know they're equal yet. Okay, and just be careful, in this exponent, I'm replacing this n with n plus 1. There's still the extra plus 1 there. Okay, so if we can join these two things together, the whole problem is done. Well, what do we know that a n plus 1 is? a n plus 1 was given to be 2 a n plus 5. 
Okay, a n plus one was given to be two a n plus five. I've got a five plus five here. Seems reasonable that I might want to call that plus 10. Now I can factor a two out. Oh, hey, we already have an assumption. A n plus five is in fact equal to three times two to the n plus one. And just as in the previous problem, we're just going to move that 3 and then absorb this 1 power of 2 into that one, and it all matches up. Okay. Now we've reached a part in the notes where division and subtraction are legal, so the formulas look a little more familiar. Okay, so we still start off by listing out a 0, a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4 a5. a0 was given to be 2. The next term is always the previous one plus that index plus 1. So a sub 1 is going to be a sub 0 plus 0 plus 1. a sub 2 is going to be a sub 1 plus 1 plus 1. Just note that this index matches the thing I'm adding here. This index matches this thing, but there is still a plus 1 after that. So a3 is equal to a2 plus 2 plus 1. a4 is a3 plus 3 plus 1. a5 is a4 plus 4 plus 1. A lot of students ask, by the way, why am I writing 1 plus 1, 2 plus 1, 3 plus 1, uh, rather than just saying, oh, this is a 2 and a 3 and a 4. Uh, the answer is I'm trying to think as little as possible. I am just copying this formula. This subscript goes there and there's a plus one. I just like to illustrate that you don't have to think very much, just follow an inductive procedure here. All right, well, if we know that a zero is two, this becomes two plus zero plus one, in other words, three. This becomes three plus one plus one, in other words, five. This becomes five plus two plus one, AKA eight. Eight plus three plus one is 12 and 12 plus 4 plus 1 is 17. All right, that's all fun and interesting, but let's go ahead and prove that for every n, a sub n is n squared plus n plus 4 all over 2. So we need to check, is this in fact true when n is 0? Is a sub 0 actually equal to 0 squared plus 0 plus 4 over 2? Well, a sub 0 was given to be 2, and if I simplify this formula, I would get 4 over 2, and yes, 2 is 4 over 2. This numerator of 4, sure, it all works out. Now we're going to assume that for some n, at least as big as our base case, the formula we'd like to always be true is in fact true at least once. For some particular value of n, we want it to be true for the next value of n. On the left, we would just get a sub n plus 1. On the right, we have that index squared plus that index plus 4 all over 2. What do we actually, and if we can just join these two things together, the problem is done. Now, what do we actually know that a n plus 1 is equal to? It's equal to a n plus n plus 1. That is our recursive formula that was given here at the beginning. And we just assumed that a n is n squared plus n plus 4 all over 2. but we still have the plus n and the plus one. So what we need to do is just some algebra to show that this mess is in fact equal to that. And what I'm just gonna do is I'm going to work forward from here, giving them a common denominator of two and backwards from here, expanding and simplifying. And if they join up somewhere in the middle, well then they were the same. Okay, so here, moving forward, we would have n squared plus n plus four plus two n plus two all over two. So here's my n squared plus n plus four over two. This would be two n over two, and this would be two over two, and I've just added them all up. That simplifies down to n squared plus three n plus six all over two. Now working from the bottom backwards, I'd still have everything over two, but if I expand everything out, n plus 1 squared would be n squared plus 2n plus 1 plus n plus 1 plus 4. Okay, so this line here, I've simply distributed everything out in the numerator. Now let's check, are these two lines actually the same? n squared, n squared, 3n, 
2n plus n, 6, 1, 1, and 4. So yes, this line is in fact equal to that. So now everything works out. a n plus 1 is actually equal to the formula that I wanted. So assuming that the formula holds for n, it must hold for n plus 1. We showed it holds for 0. Inductively, it now must hold for all natural numbers. Charging forward with another induction problem. Okay, so as before, we're supposed to start off by listing out a 0, a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5. We are given a recursive formula. Okay, first of all, a sub 0 is given to be 3. After that, the next term is 2 times the previous, that index squared minus that index plus 1. So whatever index I put down here, I'm going to square it, subtract it, and then add 1. So without thinking very much, a sub 0 is, or sorry, a sub 1 is 2a0 plus that index squared minus that index plus 1. a sub 2 is 2a1 plus that index squared minus that index plus 1. We'll simplify all of this later. a sub 3 is 2 times a2 plus that index squared minus that index plus 1. a sub 4, 2a3 plus 3 squared minus 3 plus 1. And a sub 5, 2a4 plus 4 squared minus 4 plus 1. Now we just do the familiar by now game. Since we know this value, a sub 0 is 3, we're going to plug it in here. Once we know that, we'll plug it in there, and so forth and so forth. So since we know a sub 0 is 3, 2 times 3 with an extra plus 1 gives us 7. 2 times 7, plus 1 minus 1 plus 1, 15. 2 times 15, plus 4 minus 2 plus 1 is 33. 2 times 33 is 66. 66 plus 9 is 75, minus 3 is 72, plus 1 is 73. 2 times 73 is 146, plus 16 is 162, minus 4 is 158, plus 1 is 159. All right, so we did our computational part. Not terribly interesting at this point anymore. Now let's go ahead and prove our inductive uh, claim. First, we want to do our base case. When n is 0, here's the formula that we hope is always true. Let's just check, is it at least true if n is 0? Is a sub 0 actually equal to 3 times 2 to the 0 plus 1 minus 1 minus 0 times 0 plus 1? All I'm doing is I'm copying exactly this, replacing all of the n's with zeros. Well, we know a sub 0 is 3. Now, if I was to work backwards from this end, this would be 3 times 2 to the first minus 1 minus 0. And indeed, 2 to the first is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1, 3 times 1 minus 0 is 3. So this all checks out. Next, I'm going to assume for some n at least as large as our base case, that the claim we want to be true is actually true. What we need to show is that for the next value of n, our desired claim really is true. So on the left, I would just replace n with n plus 1. And I hope, but don't yet know it, but I hope it's equal to all of this, where I replace every occurrence of n with n plus 1. So what I'm hoping to get out at the end is 3, 2 to the n plus 1, plus 1, minus 1, parenthesis, minus n plus 1 times n plus 1, plus 1. All I did to get this line here was to take this and replace every instance of n with n plus 1, and I didn't think very hard. So I didn't do any simplification. I just took this n, replaced it with n plus 1. I took this n, replaced it with n plus 1, so forth, so forth. So how am I going to get from here to here? Is there anything we do know about a n plus 1? Yes, we were given that a n plus 1 follows this formula here. So we get 2 a n plus n squared minus n plus 1. And we just assumed that a n can be replaced with all of this. So 2 times 3 times 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1 
minus n times n plus 1, but we still have this extra n squared minus n plus 1 hanging out. Now the only question is, can we do algebra to turn this into this? We really hope so. Well, <clears throat> let's just distribute everything out on both pieces, okay? So this is going to be 2 times, this is 3 times 2 to the n plus 1 minus 3 minus n squared minus n plus n squared minus n plus 1. If I distribute out this 2, we get 3 times 2 to the n plus 2 minus 6 minus 2n squared minus 2n plus n squared minus n plus 1. And if I collect everything together, this exponential term is what it is. Let's see, we have 2n squareds and a plus n squared, so overall minus n squared. What n's do we have? We have minus 2n minus n for a total of minus 3n. And what constants? We have a minus 6 and a plus 1. That works out to be minus 5. So working forward from here and simplifying as much as possible, we get this. Okay, whoops, and I copied something down wrong here in this line. Notice it's 2 to the n plus 2, so of course that should be a 2 to the n plus 2. I just wrote it wrong. Now let's work backwards from here. Well, this is 2 to the n plus 2 times 3. Minus 3 minus n plus 1 times n plus 2. So 3 times 2 to the n plus 2 minus 3 minus n squared plus 3n plus 2. Okay, I'm out of space, but let's just go ahead and check. Okay, working forward, we got to this line. Working backwards, we got to this line. So the only question is, do these two things join up? 3 times 2 to the n plus 2 and 3 times 2 to the n plus 2, those are identical. Great. Here we have a minus n squared, and here we're going to get a minus n squared. Here we have a minus 3n, minus 3n, minus 5, minus 3, and minus 2. So indeed, everything matches up. Having assumed the formula holds for one index n, it must hold for the next. It did hold for the first choice of n, and now inductively it holds for every choice of n. Now we've got something a little different because we were given two initial values. A0 is 1, A1 is 1. And we're still supposed to find values for A2, A3, A4, A5. So why were we given two consecutive starting values? Well, look at the recursive formula. If I want to go two steps forward, I take the term before that and add it to twice the term before that. So to get a new term with index n plus 2, I take the previous term with index n plus 1 and add to it two times the one before that with index n. So to get a 2, I would take a 1 plus 2a0. a 3 is going to be a 2 plus 2a1. a 4 is a 3 plus 2a2 and a5 is a4 plus 2a3. So in order to compute a2, I need to know the values of a1 and a0, but I do. They were both 1. So this works out to be 1 plus 2 times 1, in other words, 3. Now I know that a2 can be substituted with 3, while a1 can be substituted with a 1. So we get 3 plus 2 times 1, in other words, 5. Then a3 can be replaced with a 5, while a2 can be replaced with a 3. So we get 5 plus 2 times 3, which is 11. a4 can be replaced with 11, while a3 gets replaced with 5, 21. So these values go 1, 1, 3, 5, 11, 21. And from then we could keep con computing, but we're not asked to. The inductive part works a little differently. Because we have a recursive argument that looks at two prior terms, From to get this term I need the one before it and the one before that, so I need to look two steps back in the past. We need to prove two consecutive base cases. So my base cases are n equals 0 and n equals 1. 
we're going to manually show that the claim is true for two different base cases. So I want a zero to be of a particular form and I want a one to be of a particular form. Here's the formula we're trying to show is always true. So for n equals zero, I'd really like for this to be negative one to the zero plus two to the zero plus one all over three. Well, for uh, n equals one, I'd like it to be negative one to the first plus two to the one plus one all over three. We happen to know that a sub zero is one and that a sub one is one. Well, negative one to the zero is just one and two to the zero plus one is just two. So yes, this really is three over three. One is three over three and three is negative one to the zero plus two to the zero plus one. So it checks out. Here, negative one to the first would be minus one, while two to the second would be four. So I can still call this three over three, but then I can call three negative one plus four over three, and it checks out again. Okay, so by manually computing, we've shown that the desired formula is actually true for two consecutive base cases, zero and one. Now, why do we need two consecutive base cases? The inductive step is gonna work a little differently now as well. Now assume that for two consecutive terms, the desired formula holds, that a sub n really is equal to negative one to the n plus two to the n plus one over three, and the next term also holds with the formula we want. Then what we need to show is that it remains true for the next step, that a sub n plus two is hopefully equal to negative one to the n plus two plus two to the n plus two plus one over three. Well, what I know about a sub n plus two is that it's a n plus one plus two a n. We just assumed that a n plus one is negative one to the n plus one plus two to the n plus two, all over three, plus two times negative one to the n plus two to the n plus one, all over three. This all has a common denominator three, so let's distribute all of this out. We get negative one to the n plus one, plus two times negative one to the n, plus two to the n plus two, plus two times two to the n plus one. So here, this two times two to the n plus one, I can replace as two to the n plus two. Now what do we have? We have two to the n plus two plus two to the n plus two. Well, if two to the n plus two is a banana, I have a banana plus a banana. In other words, I have two bananas. So let me carve out some space here. We have two two to the n plus ones. That's gonna give us our two to the n plus, sorry, two n plus twos. I just wrote it down wrong, but I have two to the n plus two and two to the n plus two, so I have two of them. And two times two to the n plus two is gonna give me my two to the n plus three. Now let's look at negative one to the n plus one plus two times negative one to the n. The thing about powers of minus one is that they alternate, right? They go plus minus plus minus. So in a little box over on the left, negative one to the n plus one is always equal to negative one to the first times negative one to the n. In other words, negative negative one to the n. You can always adjust the power of negative one by one step by putting a minus sign out in front. And similarly, negative one to the n is itself times one, but one is the same thing as negative one squared. And that would be negative one to the n plus two. This is a really common trick in these problems. You can adjust the exponent on negative one by one if you change a plus to a minus or a minus to a plus, and you can always replace an exponent of n with something two larger or smaller by not changing anything at all. So I want to get an exponent of n plus two. So negative one to the n plus one, if I change it into exponent n plus two, I only changed the exponent by one step. And if I change the exponent by one step, I throw a minus sign out in front. 
However, this negative 1 to the n, if I want to change it to match this exponent, I'm changing it by two steps. And I can change it by two steps without changing anything at all. And now I have minus one of these things plus two of these things. Overall, we have one of these things. So the arithmetic all checks out. Just remember, whenever your formula has these powers of minus one, this is a really handy thing to remember. You can adjust the power of a minus one by one step by changing an external plus to a minus or vice versa. You can change the exponent by two for free. For our final problem, we have another two-step inductive problem. What I mean by that is that the recursive formula that generates a new term relies on the previous term and the one before that. It relies on the previous two terms. Well, we start off like we've been doing. We are given that a0 is 2 and that a1 is 1. We need to compute the values of a2, a3, a4, a5. Let's take a look at our recursive formula. To get a new term of the sequence, we take 2 times the term before it plus 3 times the term before that. In other words, a sub 2 is 2 times the term before it plus 3 times the term before that. a3 is 2 times the previous term plus 3 times the term before that one. a sub 4 is 2a3 plus 3a2. And a sub 5 is 2a4 plus 3a3. Since we know the value of a0 and a1, we can plug those on here to compute a2. Once we know the values of a2 and a1, we can compute a3 and so forth. So plugging in a 1 here and a 2 there, we'll get that a2 is equal to 8. Plugging in an 8 here and a 1 here, 19. With a sub 3 being 19 and a sub 2 being 8, we get uh, 38 plus 24, so that's 62. And with a sub 4 being 62 and a sub 3 being 19, we have 124 plus 57, and 124 plus 57 is 181. Yeah. Okay, so we computed a bunch of terms, and we had tremendous fun doing so. But now we move on to our inductive proof that this formula here holds for all n. So since we have a two-step recursive formula, we're going to deal with two base cases. First, what if n is 0, and then what if n is 1? Well, if n is 0, we are hoping that a sub 0 equals 5 times negative 1 to the 0 plus 3 to the 0 plus 1 all over 4. If n is 1, we are hoping that a sub 1 is equal to 5 times negative 1 to the first plus 3 to the 1 plus 1 over 4. We were given that a sub 0 is 2. We were given that a sub 1 is 1. We just have to algebraically verify that this is indeed true, as is this. And yes, this gives us a 5 plus 3 over 4. In other words, an 8 over 4, which is actually equal to 2. Down at the bottom, we get a negative 5 plus 9 over 4. In other words, 4 over 4, and that is indeed equal to 1. So our claimed formula does hold when n is 0, and it does hold when n is 1. We could keep checking by hand that it continues to hold, but that's not going to be helpful. We move on to the inductive portion. Now let's assume that for some n, at least as large as 0, the desired formula has, hold, has held for two consecutive terms. And I'm just replacing n with n plus 1 to get the next version of the formula. Then what we need to show is that for the next term, which would be a sub n plus 2, for the next term, the desired formula still holds. And that would be 5 times negative 1 to the n plus 2 plus 3 to the n plus 2 plus 1 all over 4. What do I actually know about a n plus 2? It is 2 a n plus 1 plus 3 a n. And we've inductively assumed that a sub n plus 1 can be replaced with this, and a n can be replaced with that. Now notice a n plus 1 has denominator 4, a n has denominator 4, 
and I want to end up with denominator 4. So I'm not going to do any simplification with this 2 here. That would be counterproductive. I want to keep everything with denominator 4. So if I collect everything over a denominator of 4, we get all of this for a n plus 1 times 2, and we get all of this for a n times 3. So we're going to get a 2 times 5 times negative 1 to the n plus 1, plus 2 times 3 to the n plus 2, plus 3 times 5 times negative 1 to the n, plus 3 times 3 to the n plus 1. Okay, <clears throat> now we just need to keep doing some algebra. With powers of minus 1, we're going to do this trick, where if you change the exponent by 1, that's at the cost of changing a plus to a minus or vice versa. If you change the exponent by 2, you can do that for free. So I would like the exponent to be n plus 2. Here I have an exponent of n plus 1. So that one needs to get adjusted by 1. So instead of 2 times 5, I'm going to get a negative 10. Negative 1 to the n plus 2. Over here, if I have a minus 1 to the n, and I'd like to get minus 1 to the n plus 2, that's going to change the exponent by two steps, which is free. So this remains a 15 with a plus. So plus 15 times negative 1 to the n plus 2. Now let's look at our powers of 3. I have 2 times 3 to the n plus 2. There's not a lot I can do there. And over here, I have 3 times 3 to the n plus 1. That becomes 3 to the n plus 2. All right, so now we just have to check. My powers of minus 1 are what I want them to be. I have negative 10 of them plus 15 of them. That's just 5 of them. And what about my powers of 3? 3 to the n plus 2, I have two of them here and one of them there. So these two terms give me a 3 times 3 to the n plus 1. I'm uh, sorry, 3 times 3 to the n plus 2. Okay, if I have 2 of them plus 1 of them, I have 3 of them. But 3 times 3 to the n plus 2 is 3 to the n plus 3. So everything checks out. And the problem is at last complete.